Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. This is Connie with Prairie Paper Crafts. Coming on today to share with you uh, the treasure box or the hope chest box, I guess it is, I don't know what exactly you want to call it, uh, that I had made. I had posted this on my Facebook page. I'm just going to do a quick walkthrough and then I will do a tutorial because some people had wanted to know how I put this together. But I just put a um, medium-sized heartfelt creations idea that I created, put a little bow on the back, put some greens on here. I will tell you that I had a completely different top on here. I didn't like it at all. It was really boring. So I, and it had been on for a few days and it sat on my desk and it just was not working. So I was able to get most of it off, covered up the rest with this topper and pretty happy with it. But I just put some rhinestones uh, our little, you know, crystal rhinestones on there. I am just using up what I have for my stash. This is the back. I left it plain. And then the sides I left plain. And then uh, I just, just created this little closure piece. It's not, it, it stays closed itself. You, you really don't have to put anything on. But it reminded me somewhat of a hope chest little clasp. I don't have any uh, little metal findings anywhere that would work for this that I'm aware of. I think I got rid of all of my tiny little hinges and stuff. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Uh, and then I put little wooden knobs on the bottom, which you wouldn't have to. Here's the really fun thing. When this opens, and you can't really see it, but there's a little hinge in here that holds this together. So this top and bottom are actually two separate pieces. That's what I really like about this. And then um, the sides and the front here have these little pieces. So pretty fun. Okay, so I just put that in just because uh, I'm going to use it for a little gift box for some candies. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the video tutorial. I do have to cut one more piece real quick. I do apologize. I thought I had everything cut. I'm going to quick cut that, and then I will get on with the uh, tutorial. I am so sorry. So, let get this, and I... Oh, let's see. I know this is going to be the wrong side. One and a fourth. I know I had this cut, and then I thought, no, I don't need it, and I actually do. I made that box... <clears throat> Excuse me, it's sitting off. I made that a while ago, and I hadn't posted it, and then I posted it and had some requests for a tutorial. And mine is the only die that is used as a circle die. The rest I cut. The video I watched, they use dies and stuff, and you can do that. You can cut these pieces with the cutting machine. It's just, yeah, amazing. Let me mark this, and... So, sorry, and I'm shaking the camera. I apologize. I press too hard when I write. Okay, so I'm going to give you the pieces you need and the sizes first, and then we're going to get into it. You will need two pieces of four and a half by five and a half inch cardstock. We'll get into the scoring in a moment. Um, this is going to be for the top and the bottom. I used uh, for my inside box piece, I used some basil cardstock, and it's very sturdy, don't get me wrong. Um, I would use heavier cardstock, though, if you can, and if you need to, we can always reinforce the bottom, too, so it'll make it a lot sturdier. But anyway, you need a two, like a four and a half by five and a half, and if you cut this... Uh, I'll take a piece of 8.5 by 11 paper because uh, you can use that and I think you'll pretty much get all the pieces you need out of this. But if you cut it the long way and cut it at 4.5 and, and then cut it at 5.5, you should have enough space for all of the uh, base pieces. And then you will need one piece cut at 3 and 3 eighths by 1 and a fourth. I'm missing something here. Oh, there it is. 
I'm seeing a lot today. You will need one piece cut at three and three eighths by one and three fourths. Notice it's a half of an inch longer. You will need two pieces cut at two and one eighth by one and one fourth. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, for the, if you wish to do these rounded corners, you will need two pieces, excuse me, eight circles cut at one and one half inches. I just used some uh, off-brand dynamic, or excuse me, off-brand uh, circle dies, and I had one that was almost one and a half inches cut out. You could cut these one and a half inch circles on your electronic cutting machine, find something that's one and a half inches in diameter, and trace it. So really no special dies are needed for this design. I'm doing mine all in white, uh, just because I am going to make one of these. I just decided I'm going to make one, and I'm going to, I have some, I don't know if it's some kind of pirate paper, and I don't know who it's from. It's six inch square, but I'm going to make the base, and then I can use the six inch pieces for my sides and to decorate it, and then I'm going to make um a paper piece and I'm going to have it actually stand up on top of it so it's like a little pirate treasure just just to give you an idea but I am doing like I said all of mine in in white so okay I have one piece done just want to show you that but on the four and a half by five and a half inch sides you're going excuse me you are going to score it one inch those I'll bring my score bit, scoreboard back in a minute, but one inch on all four sides, so all the way around on both pieces, okay? And then what you do on the long sides, you're going to cut up to that first score line. And I'll come back in my more oh, miter my corners in a moment. Sorry about that. I do it on my long sides here. Just cut up. Do not cut the corners out if you've not made boxes. I don't know, you know, what everybody has done or not done, so that's why I say that. But, okay, I have all four corners cut. For me, it is easier to cut first and then burnish my score lines. If it works better for you the other way, by all means, do that. But what I'm doing on these four corners... I'm making sure I don't get this long piece. I'm just cutting out a little notch or a little tiny triangle. <clears throat> it helps them to lay a little better, the box to go together better. And it just go up to that first score line. I just cut out a little corner. And again, don't do the long sides. Just do the little squares. Just notch those little corners out. And I didn't cut very straight on this little piece, so I'm just straightening this out. It's very difficult for me to see uh, with the light so bright. I'm not going to be able to get it up, leave it alone. But normally I go back and cut that little. I might be able to see if I hold it up. Just, uh, I don't have the right scissors to be cutting like this. My uh, little Fisker scissors kind of kept losing the spring in the middle and it uh, I lost the spring finally and I've tried to cut without it but it does not work and I have another set I just didn't go and take it out which I can see is going to be necessary okay I just want to get those apologize out of the way okay then come in and on both, you would do this on both pieces, by the way. As you can see, I've already done it on this. And then I come in and I burnish my score lines. If you've made boxes before and not done it with the hinge, I would, just a suggestion, I would recommend watching this before you start, you know, putting it together because there is a trick to doing this. So, and I already didn't follow my directions and 
jumped ahead and then I thought, oh wait, I can't do that. So <clears throat> this box I did not do it the way I'm doing it. It was a lot harder to put together. So, or not a lot, but it was more difficult. So, okay, I'm going to set these aside because they're all prepped and ready to go. These two little pieces that will be going on the sides. If you have a quarter inch corner rounder, that would be a good place to use this. I'm going to try to do two at a time. Um, one long side only. You're going to round each corner. And I'm using my corner rounder punch. So it's just what you end up with. Two of those. The hinge, you don't do anything with this, but you will score it with the short end at the top at three quarters of an inch. So you can see it scored at, well, as close as I can get. Oh, excuse me, I said that wrong. Seven eighths of an inch. You want it in half. It's one and three quarters inch wide this way on the short end. So you seven eighths. I, I am so sorry. Yeah, be sure to not do as I say, just do as the direction of the show. Okay, this last long piece, it's three and three eighths by one and a fourth. On one of the long ends, again, I'm rounding with my one inch, or my fourth inch quarter rounder piece. Okay, that's all you'll need that for. The circles that you've cut out, if you've cut in different colors, Please set those aside. You do need eight of those, by the way, if you're going to put corners on top and bottom. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is take my two long sides. I am going to make sure that this is, you can see this. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm matching up these two long pieces. And I want to get them so they are laying as close as humanly possible side to side and I have to think about this for a moment just bear with me how this it's been a while since I watched the video so I apologize yeah okay Get those lined up again and I'm gonna set something on it that I'm not gonna use I'm gonna be using my um beacon glue I'm going to give you a hint about the beacon glue while I'm waiting for this to drip down a little bit if you use beacon and you get uh, the strings and stuff and the straggly stuff at the top I'd read somewhere to put Vaseline on the tips and you will not have that problem so just a hint taking the hinge okay and what we're going to do is for the score line is that's going to go right between these two flaps that I'm lifting up here okay so half the hinge is going to go on this piece right here and the other half is going to go on here so let me oops the glue drip down too long I only put glue on a half a piece at a time I just have glue on one side I can't do both now you want that score in the middle, remember. So I'm just kind of lining it up the best I can here. Hard to work on my glue bottles, but it holds them together. Okay. I think I'm going to have to work on this side. And I'm going to get that out of the way a minute since I'm not putting it there. And I'm just putting it so it butts up right to the edge. And I'm going to give that a minute and try to center it between the two pieces because you have about a sixteenth of an inch or so in the in between. That's not going to work. I'm going to turn mine sideways so I can work better. Okay, so again, you have your score here. You want to flatten that out, okay? But you want to match up these pieces again. Let me make sure I'm in frame. I'm going to move up a little bit. Okay, so I have the opposite side. So I have this top here is laying down, and here's my hinge. 
it's just going to go fold over and it's going to get glued down. So let me get some glue on that. My sister picked up this beacon glue at the dollar store. It's a little one and three quarters inch ounce and it's foam and poster board adhesive. It works wonderful for paper, especially for heavier paper. It's really great. Okay, I'm making sure again that my pieces are lined up, butted up together. And there I go. So on the outside, if this is what it looks like. You got your two pieces together. Okay. Now you can come in and make your box. So work on these first. This doesn't dry as fast as fast as our glitter glue, so I'm just putting the paper on the four tabs here. I'll bring these up, put them down, and I'll show you in a minute. I just want to get them down. What I did is I bring these four corners in, and then I fold it up. This is hard to show on video. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get the outsides matched up so it's all lined up straight. One side's a tiny bit off, uh, but on video, again, it's hard to do, to show, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and do these so they're out of my way. So I'm going to put glue on these two little tabs. It would help if I got the lid. Oh, we need to back up a moment. I get this. I'm sorry. My apologies. Before we do this, we want to put our sides on. Otherwise, we're going to not be able to get them on. I apologize. So sorry. Okay. Let's come back. That's why I like to use liquid glue instead of tape because, well, it just works better for me. You could still come in and do this when it's assembled. It's just easier for me to do it this way. So figure out, you know, if you have a preference, if you look at it, what do you want for top and bottom? doesn't really matter, but just so you kind of know. What you're going to do is with these little pieces, a two and one eighth by one and a fourth, put glue on about half of it, okay? And you're going to put those, you're going to center those in between the two short ends, one on each side. And I just put it fairly close to the score line, but not over. Because when it comes up, it's going to be those sides on the outside there and it just kind of helps to keep the makes the box sturdier and it also keeps it together when it closes it'll help it too so we do the other side again it's best always to watch my videos through to the end and then go back and assemble because yeah I never make mistakes right only all the time this is my bottom piece now okay we're going to do the same with this. This is going to be the piece that folds up in front. This is the long three and three eighths by one and a fourth inch piece. And again, you could put these in after the box is assembled. It's not the end of the world. It's just easier to assemble. So <clears throat> let's put some glue back on here. And people wonder why I use so much glue. Now you know. Because I can't do things right the first time. So I don't know if you could see that. I just bring it up and I line up the edges here. And I'll do the same over here. It's basically assembling like half a box without any kind of a lid if you've ever done that. So what I'm doing is I'm just matching up the corners here best I can with and I try to kind of hold it so it sets up good. Okay, then I'm going to do the bottom. Oops. Do not want glue everywhere. I 
I'm just going to use uh, my I had a last for words this morning. My bone folder. Oh my goodness. It's been... That's the way things have been going lately. Can't remember things very well. I don't know what's going on. Okay. And then get that in there. This one I might have to come in from the inside and do, yeah, tuck it down in there. It's not quite, they're not quite even on the sides today. I'm just having a wonderful morning trying to do this. You know, when I'm on video or on camera, it doesn't work out right. But when I'm not on film, I don't have problems. It's crazy. Okay, I'm going to put these two flaps on. If you want these flaps hidden by the hinges or, you know, yeah, the hinges in these little pieces, I would recommend putting those on last. Again, it's how you want to do it. I'm just doing it the way that um, original directions had given that I watched the video for. Because they're all the same color, you don't see it, honestly, so this I want to say I did it I assembled it you know the box base and then I put the hinges in these pieces on last it was a lot easier I, I don't know and I had heavier paper keep that in mind so that would make it easier to work with though too make sure you get that inside uh, just because flimsier paper is not, for boxes, is not the best idea. And you can add a lot of layers, make it a lot sturdier, but yeah, assembling it the first time is kind of the pits. Oh, sorry, I'm off frame. I'm used to working alone and not on video. That's not quite glued all the way to the edge, but that's fine. It's no big deal. Okay. Then, as you can see, it stays together by itself. There's your little box before it's decorated. Now, I'm going to show you the corner piece. This just threw me off. How in the world was I going to get this figured out? And I had to watch the video, the dies that were used. And I can't remember the, what video I watched, but they had special dies. It actually cut the... The way I'm going to show you how to do this. It, it was just, it had the notches and everything. It cut everything out. Like, there's got to be a way I can do that without a uh, die. Because I'm not uh, able to get the dies. So, I need to back my chair up and see if I can get this in frame. Okay. So, with, to make those circles, it's very very simple I'm just taking my scoreboard you will need an eighth of an inch markings on your scoreboard and I'm just putting it all the way up into the right to me the left corner holding it there as best I can this is the one you're gonna score at three-fourths of an inch okay do a rotation and get that I know you can't see that score line, but try to get that at, at as much of a, you know, straight as you can. I eyeball it. I don't, I tried using my T ruler. Oh, I, I just had a mess. It didn't work. So I'm just eyeballing, eyeballing it as close as I can. And then, excuse me, score it th uh, three quarters of an inch again. That's all you need your scoreboard for on that piece. Let me make sure I'm back in frame. Okay, this one I do have to score so I can see what I'm doing. And I like to bur or I like to burnish it after I get it scored. Normally I cut and then burnish, but anyway, what you've got is scored and scored in half, and it's it's pretty even either way you go. It, so okay, I'm gonna do this on the back, and I'm gonna. 
draw uh, this out so you can see it first. What you're gonna do on only one of your score lines, you're gonna cut about three-fourths of the way up. Here's the center. Okay, and then you're going to, on one other score line, you're going to cut all the way to the center. So let's do that first. This will make more sense once we're all done. I didn't draw very straight on that. It's okay. Oh, I'm going to stop the video. Let's back up here a little bit. I apologize. I messed up on this piece. We don't cut on this first score line. I am sorry. One moment. Okay, so sorry about that. Okay, let's do this. Here is the center. I recut this, so we are going to cut at, on one side all the way up. My hand jumped over when I was scoring this, which is probably not a bad thing. But we're going to take this at about, here's the score line. The dash is the score line at about an eighth of an inch over or so. We're going to cut up there about three fourths of the way. So we're going to cut that way. We are going to cut this one, was correct. One, so one score line, we're going to cut all the way on the score line, one about an eighth of an inch over. Okay, then we're going to angle or taper up to the center and cut that out. So I don't know if you can see how that looks. Let me get this garbage out of the way and you can see better. But this is what your circle is going to look like. Okay. You are going to again burnish the score marks. And this is so incredibly simple. Just fold it and you get to fold like that. And for this, I use art glitter glue. You can use any glue or any adhesive you have, whatever you wish, but I just, it's small, it works. Hold it there and try to get it lined up on the score line and that cut line there. If you have a little tiny, I got a little tiny piece hanging over because it's not scored 100% straight. I just, again, I don't have the right scissors to cut small stuff, but I just trim that little piece off. So, again, I apologize. I'll try to uh, either edit the video or make a note on that part if I can. Whoop, wrong box. So I'll just put that back there. And then these very simply, are going to go on the corner. Just I don't put the cut line. I put that at the bottom or off to the side. They just get glued on each of your four corners on top and on the bottom. And that's really simple. I just put glue on three pieces. You guys probably knew how to do this. I did not. I was fascinated. I can now put corners on other boxes if I wish. Very easy. And it does protect the corners a lot. You know, it's it's really nice. So that is the box. And then if you wish to decorate it, of course you would put the panels on, however you want it, before you put the corners on. Um, I'm going to let you guys decide how you want to decorate the top. I, I don't... You know, pretend to tell you how to do that. I did, like I said, put little wooden knobs on the bottom. As you can see, you don't have to. My closure, I'm just going to show you what I did here on paper. I'll draw it out and, and you can tell from there. If I've got a piece of, oh, all my scratch paper is full of ink. It's crazy. Okay, this will work. I did this on my Cricut. I didn't do this with any dies or anything. I took three circles. I'm just going to use the inside. It's easier to trace around. Okay. And I, so, so I had three circles. And then I moved them on Cricut. So they were all lined up. 
at the top. So you'd have, you know, consider there's one more circle here. Then I moved the circles over. Okay, bear with me here. Just, these won't be straight, but you'll get the gist of what it's. I'll erase it if I need to. I just lined the three circles up at the top. And then I did some um, slicing. Sorry, I'm bumping the camera. But um, how did that work? No. I took this outside one away. I don't know how I did it. I I have to think this one we're going to keep. This one comes out. I started slicing. So basically, what, if you take those two outside circles off, all you end up having left is that piece I used for my latch. By the time I got done slicing everything, I mean, it was very simple to do. Like I said, I looked and I couldn't find anything I liked in Design Space for a latch. Oh, I can cut straight, right? Anyway, uh, that's how I basically got my latch. It was longer, but that uh, that is my little treasure chest. This could easily be resized for many different sizes. Um, you just just need to, you know, if you want it skinnier, you could do that. I am going to come back at some point and do a suitcase tutorial. I have that too. I just haven't made it, um, but that's really cute. But that would be uh, this way. It's a little more narrow, a little bit longer, and then you put a hand on. Anyway, I had, like I said, had some questions on how to do this. So that is my tutorial. And I will try to come back before Christmas and do a tutorial on the flowers. Apologize, I've had some setbacks and trying to get things caught up and almost done with Christmas. I'm sorry, I'm ready to move on to other things. So anyway, thank you all for joining me. Have an awesome day, everybody. Take care.